welcome to the Indomitable Podcast. I'm your host, Di Cerullo, and today we have another great episode that will leave you inspired. New Orleans psychic medium Carrie Roy has been featured on the Today Show, A&E, Discovery, Biography, and Travel Channels, local and national news and print. Recognized as New Orleans' most accomplished psychic medium, she is a third-generation spiritual practitioner, making very fertile ground for her own abilities to develop. Love that. Miss Roy is named number one psychic medium to see in New Orleans by TravelChannel.com and is recommended best psychic medium to see in the USA by BBC America. Her new book, Awaken Your Intuition, Empowering Women's Success in Life and Business, debuted at number one in women's spiritual development category. Oh my goodness. How do I even start with this? Well, hello, Miss Carrie. Hello, Di. So happy to be here. Thank you so much for for having me. Absolutely. How could I not? I'm delighted to have this conversation with you. So before we go off on a tangent, why don't you go ahead and just sort of fill in what I've left out and, and how did we get here? Okay. Um, long and windy road. Uh, I was <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah, I, I was very fortunate in that I was born into a home where a uh, psychic phenomenon was kind of a normal thing. My yes. mother was a psychic medium and my grandfather was an astrologer and a numerologist. And mm. so uh, they didn't force it on me. But when I started showing my abilities, they were definitely supportive and helped guide me along the way until I was in my mid-teens and my mother actually died and I was kind of went off on my own thing and then uh, just life kept presenting me with opportunities to do this and I actually started out as a singer um, in the music business and there was a woman that booked my band at the time and she and I became friendly and she knew that from just becoming friends with me that I did tarot cards and, you know, new astrology and all of that stuff. And so one day she called me and she asked me, can you do this for a profession? Could you do this and make money doing it? Because I have something mm -hmm. that is perfect for you. If you can put this together, like put together some kind of proposal for me and get it to me. And mm -hmm. so I was in my 20s and I thought, well, what the hell? You know, I might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I started working with her and that was my per first professional job in 1985. Mm. And it just, wow. um, it kind of continued. I started going back into the music business for a minute, but everything was steering me towards doing this. And wow. I finally just stopped and said, this is what my intuition is saying. My mm. intuition is saying, I need to do this as my profession. And so I spent about 20 years working in shops in the French Quarter. Um, mm -hmm. New Orleans is a very, very spiritual place. So it's yes. not unusual. Yeah, no. there there were several places in town that had, you know, um, jobs for tarot card readers and stuff. And so that's how I started out. And I owe a tremendous amount of gratitude to the older readers, all of whom have crossed now. Um, mm. But and I think they still influence me from the other side. Of but course, still nobody ever stops. No, never stops. And so they they picked up from where my mother had left off. And mm. so here I am 40 years later, I went out on my own uh, right before Katrina. Mm. And so I've been on my own for the last 20 years. And I just love what I do. I was uh, talking with somebody just yesterday. They were like, well, because I'm in my 60s now. And they're like, well, when are you retiring? I was like, when they pronounce me dead. I mean, yeah, I'm not right? retiring. <laughs> How do you retire from who you are? Yeah, oh. yeah, you just can't. And so no. I'm looking forward to many, many more years of doing this. Excellent. Wow. So first of all, New Orleans, I've been to New Orleans. Everybody knows that New Orleans is a hugely spiritual place, hugely haunted place. Yes. So what's that like? What is it like to be like walking the streets every day? I swear, just even living in the Boston area, I'm constantly, I mean, I live right adjacent to Salem, Mass, right? So oh, like, wow. even just yeah. walking down the cobblestone, I'm like, oh God, this energy, <laughs> like, you know, I'm just like, what is that like? I mean, just it's everywhere in New Orleans. Yeah. It, it truly is a lot. Mm -hmm. After Katrina, I moved my offices into an area called the CBD, which is right mm -hmm. adjacent. 
after the quarter mm -hmm. uh, because the energy was just so wild in the quarter after Katrina. The spiritual activity was through the roof and it's already, wow. as you were saying, extremely haunted. Yes. Um, I, I say every brick was bled on. And so yes. it's a very small area and the action that yes. has happened in that small area is extreme. And so you have a lot of spirits that hang out here primarily because they like it. You know, yeah. I mean, people come here from all over the world and don't want to leave. And so many yeah. spirits that pass, they don't want to leave either. So wow. it's a lot. It, it truly yes. is. It's a lot. Yes. Well, I mean, the energy there is just perfect for exactly that. So, I mean, even when I was there, just walking around, I was like, oh, wow, this is, it's it's not quite swimming through a feeling, but it's very adjacent to that. Like you can just, it's everywhere there. You're steeped in this feeling that many feet have passed this way before. Talk to me about your practice. Like what, what do you do? What are your, what are your goals when you're doing um, a reading with somebody? Where do you start? Well, I'm, I, I love to welcome people um, into my office. I really love my space. I've created a very happy space. It's all pink yes. and happy and not yes. scary at all. Um, right. I've spent most of my career trying to demystify the mystical um, and yeah. make it available to everybody. Um, right. So I'm more like bewitched than I am like American Horror Story. I definitely yeah. am much more, <laughs> you know, just a happy. I mean, movie. American Horror Story is delightful, though, in that sense. Like I was, yeah. that was one of my favorite seasons. If I'm, if I'm being honest. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. It's brought a lot of focus <laughs> into New Orleans. Yeah, um, and absolutely. The, the magic scene has just blown up here. There are so many witches now that are here in New Orleans. And I really think mm -hmm. that it's because of American Horror Story. Um, I, I actually dated a fella who owned that house. And so I spent a lot of time in that house years ago. Wow. Um, that is they, a beautiful they house. They filmed that in. Yeah. Yeah. It's wow. an amazing, amazing space. Um, it's for sale now, actually. I want to say it's like $9 million it's for sale. Oh, no doubt. No uh, doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what I do is I welcome people into the world that I've created, which is a safe, safe space. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we unpack what brought the person here, you know, yeah. to me. Um, mm -hmm. Are they here for psychic reading, which is, you know, one of the things that I offer? Are they here for a medium reading, which is another mm -hmm. thing that I offer? Are they here for an astrology reading, for a past life reading? We figure yeah. out really what they are you know, what brought them to see me. And then we take it from there. And right. my aim in every single uh, session that I have with anybody is for them to walk out there without a care in the world, yes. assured about what their future holds, yes. assured at their ability to handle whatever comes. And I'm very positive. I do not, if I see something that might be unpleasant, mm. I will share that because I'm also very honest and yeah. believe that knowledge is power. But Agreed. I will never just say, like, look, you're going to lose your job without yeah. letting people know what the next step after that is. I, I definitely uh, feel that my job in the world is to make people feel absolutely fabulous about themselves, about their life and about their future and about people who they love, who have passed, that right. love is eternal. You know, these are the yeah. things that I strive to do every day. Wow. So it sounds like what you're saying is your skill isn't just even being psychic or, or um, mediumship. It's in fact, a lot of therapy as well, where you are oh, sort absolutely. of not even just, you are not even just reading that person, you are figuring out who that person is and being able to guide them through the next steps. That's not even, that's, that's not even just psychic, that's guidance, right? You know, we feel very unsafe in the world right now. As, as humans, we feel yes. terrified. They keep us sort of scared of everything. So I'm sure that in this day and age, especially you are kept very busy by people looking for what's next. So I just wanted to like expand on that, that you are able to not only see what's going to happen, but guide people through that process. That's incredible. Well, thank you. I, I've been through a lot in my life. I think uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer that everything that we go through, good and bad, we can use to turn around and help others through whatever they're dealing with. That's and exactly so, right. I feel the lifetime that I've had has prepared me to really be able to see where yeah. something is heading and yeah. to 
give other people the support that maybe I didn't always get or yeah. give back the support that I did get, you wow. know? And so I feel, um, I never look at experiences in a judgy way. Mm. I look at them as being, I'm either learning a lesson or I am the lesson. And mm. it's all about growth, all about mm -hmm. growth. Wow. So it sounds to me, and I say this a lot on this recording, it sounds to me like you became the adult you needed when you were in your hardest moments. Is yes. that true? Talk yes, to me a little absolutely. about that. How does, how does being who you are today impact that person that you were at the time? Well, I do a lot of things where I go back in time and I've mm -hmm. rescued my little me from many situations. Um, mm -hmm. I just I grew up in the 60s and the 70s. And mm -hmm. during that time, parents were not maybe as hovering as they have been. And so kids were kind right. of feral in the 60s and the 70s. You went out right. in the morning and you came back when the streetlights went out. You know, no mm. grown-ups to drive in you anywhere. You kind of had to grow up quick because you had yeah. to take care of yourself. And you understand that through foster care, you know. I, I mean, absolutely do. And so there is that little child in me that dealt with trauma. And I go back and I sit with that child and I do for that child what I do for the adults that come to see me now. Mm -hmm. And that is that I give that, you know, I go back in time and remind that child that we made it. Yeah, you know, we, it. we have, you know, with luck and grace and all of those things, we were able to get from point A to point B. And right. so I try to do that again with the clients that I have. I try to go in there and find that inner child that they have that's scared. Because it's usually mm. not the grown up part of us that's frightened. It's no, the yes. And so mm. uh, some of my conversations that I'm having, I'm really addressing that child within. Yes. And that, you know, you can do that for yourself and remind yourself that you've made it through bad things right. before. And here you are, so you can do it again. Yeah, I know for me, I did a lot of compartmentalization. So sure. when I left sort of my past behind, I, I kind of boarded it up. Yeah. And as I was writing the book, I realized that I was unpacking that in a way that I was sort of unpacking her. And I had kind yes. of left it all, boarded up. And that was another grieving and mourning process that I had to go through just in the unpacking it, just how I dealt with it, just how I was, just the things I had to do to survive. How do people, when they come to you, how do you sort of hold space for that grief that they are feeling, for that shame that they might be feeling about the things that you need to address? Well, I, I really try my best to take it away from them. And one of the things that I'm known for saying in my office is that you leave that shame here today and do not mm. take it with you when you walk out of this room. Leave yes. that burden here. Leave that, um, you know, it's it may be not 100% that they can leave it all with me, but if they mm -hmm. can leave 50% of that with me, I'll get rid of it. It's not mine, yeah. so I can't yeah. hold on to it anyway. Right. Um, and I think just giving people permission to mm -hmm. let that stuff go, giving them mm -hmm. permission, um, giving them a different framework. Uh, again, right. I I had a, pa a near death experience and it really changed the way that I look at everything in life. It wasn't what made me a psychic. It happened way into my adulthood. Um, but one of the things that I experienced was that life review where you walk mm -hmm. through your life and take a look at everything that happened. And what I found is during that period when I was leaving the world, mm. I was grateful for everything. I was grateful even for getting a beaten when I was young. I was mm. grateful for, you know, there were everything. I was just grateful for the whole thing. I didn't pick and choose. I was right. like, thank you for life. Thank you for this life. I realized that every single thing that I've been through in my life is what has created me who I am today. And there's only one me. There's only one yeah. you. There's yeah. only one of every single listener that you have out there, you know. And mm. we are the best us that we can be because of all of the experiences that we've gone through, not just because of the good ones. Right, right. Whether we would wish those things or not, Absolutely. they were important for our development. And and I have to keep using myself as a frame of reference here. But like, I have to think about the fact that when I was going through those moments, they were the worst times in my life. Like when you go through something that's hard, you think about it as the worst time in your life. Yes. And then 
sometime in your future, suddenly you have that experience, you have that moment, and you have that ability to have that exchange with another yes. person who's just a little further back than you were. Yes. And that has been incredible to me because I have like 40 years old, finally gotten to the place where I'm like, oh, okay, so I don't know the future. I don't know the answer. I don't know what's happening, but I do know that there is a future, that there is an answer, that I will know what's happening. Yes. And oh my God, I am such a control freak because of trauma. So that's hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I struggle with that tremendously, but I do know that just from my experiences, that that is how it works. And I've been leveled more times in my life just being like, oh, I guess we didn't need to worry about that one. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Give us some of your wisdom. What have you learned in this? Well, in here's this amazing something journey? that I've been toying around with a lot lately, an idea that I'm shocked it took me so long to get. Tell but me. But I really, um, I've had a lot of loss in my life. And one of the things that I do is I'm also a medium. And so I help other people with losses that they've gone through losing loved ones. Mm -hmm. And I had an epiphany that really changed grief for me. And I realized that every single person that I buried, I buried giving them the gift that they didn't have to bury me. Right? Oh, wow. Think about that right. for a minute, right? The yes. greatest gift that you can give someone is to spare them having to grieve anybody's loss because it's the hardest thing we go through. Yes. Death is the great equalizer. Everybody gets brought to their knees when somebody that they love dies, no matter who you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how whatever powerful. If your spouse dies, you're going to get brought to your knees. If your parent yes. dies, you're going to get brought to your knees. Lord forbid a child dies, you will be put through the hell that you can never imagine anybody going yes. through. And That's so right. every single time that I have had to say goodbye to another person, I have done so being able to give them a gift and that makes mm -hmm. it all okay. It truly does. You know, when I think right. about my loved ones, I'm like, okay, I took one for the team this time, guys, you know, mm -hmm. and I decided mm -hmm. and you decided that when we came into this world together, you were going to leave before me. And I said, okay, you know what? That's just fine with me because I know I'll right. see you again and mm -hmm. I'll make it until I do. And so that's right. a big, big thing that I wish I could share with everyone in the world, because we're all going to have to deal with death at some point. And yes. so just remember that whenever you are just crying because you can't stand it, think of the gift that is in that, in that grief that you don't, the person that you love does not have to sit with those feelings for you. Uh -uh. And so that's a big one right there. That that's a big, a big one. one. Um, yeah. The other thing is to well, not. It's a hard trained. one. Yeah, it is a hard one. It, it is a yeah. it is a hard one. But the other thing is to try your best not to be judgy. You know, just don't do it. It's in every religious doctrine out there. It kind mm -hmm. of you'll find something about that in there. Trust. You know, trust. Have faith. Don't judge. Don't judge mm -hmm. and be. You know, picking on everybody and everything, including yourself. Enjoy yes. the ride. This is supposed mm. to be an experience that we do enjoy, even though we go through hardships. Again, those right. hardships make us who we are. Right. You know, right. so you, you can't pick and choose like, oh, I'm only right. going to go through good things in life. You know, you have to have a yeah. cornucopia of all experiences. Yes. Since I've gone through so much, I think to myself, I wonder if it's balance. I wonder if I went through all of this stuff at the front so that I could just, and I mean, parenting is parenting. So like you're constantly learning new lessons every single day. You're always off your center. You're always trying to find the moment. And I think that like, I think it's normal now, right? Like it's, it's normal anxieties now. And I think that I'm grateful for that anyway. Like I'm grateful to have normal anxiety instead of traumatic anxiety, right? Sure. Like your frame of reference is always changing when you develop. But if you look backwards, you can see how far you've come, right? And I think about how, how much I've learned into becoming 40. And I just, I hope I have another 40 to see how much more I learn over time. I'm just... This has been, I mean, life is, life is incredible that way. So let's get into the real stuff here. Everybody's scared about the world. Yes. Everybody's scared about their lives. Yes. What, I mean, what guidance would you offer here as somebody who's been a student of living for such a long time? 
Well, I'm also a student of history. And so I've looked back in life and there's been a lot worse times than this one. Actually, yes. um, there is a professor at Harvard. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but he has done a, a lot of studies. And we right now are living the best time that there has ever been in history. More people have a roof over their head. More people are being mm -hmm. fed. More people right. have education. Um, yes, we have a bunch of, you know, disasters going on. Um, yeah. That's always happened. It's just that yeah. because of social media and because of television and because of all of these things, they're right in our living room. They're right in our newsfeed all day long. Disaster, right. disaster, disaster. And right. for every disaster, there is a story in that disaster of human beings helping each other, of yes. compassion, of connection. And so it look for the helpers as um, I think it was Mr. Rogers. Fred Rogers. Yeah, yes. Fred Rogers said, look for the helpers. They're in there. Um, mm -hmm. And we do have it. it we do have it pretty good. Even in my worst, it's been better mm -hmm. than another person in this world. Um, yeah. The old saying that if you were sitting in a circle and everybody put their problems in the middle, you would gladly take your own problems back at the end. Once you saw mm -hmm. what everybody else was going through. Yes. Um, gratitude is one of the greatest things that we can try to practice. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes gratitude is like chewing glass. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are times where I've been like, I'm grateful for my refrigerator. I'm grateful. For, <laughs> yes. I'm grateful for the my lawn in my house. You know, things yes. that seem irrelevant to my human process. I have mm -hmm. grabbed onto those because sometimes those were the only things that I really could be grateful for. And yeah. the act of gratitude really is transformative. Wow. That is well said. That's incredible. So what brings us here today? Why are, why are we here today? I'm always of the mindset that nothing happens by accident. But so when the premier psychic of New Orleans shows up in your inbox, like, hello, how, <laughs> what are we here to talk about today? I don't want to, I don't want to keep asking you my questions. What are you here to talk about today? Well, we are here to talk about the wonderful topic that you have as the reason and the basis of your podcast. Yes. And that is the indomitable. Mm. Um, within each of us, we do have that spirit that can yes. transcend anything that we have to go through in this life. Um, yes. I studied Tibetan Buddhism for many years, and there's a concept mm. in Tibetan Buddhism that when you pass, you have to go into this plane called the bardo, right? Mm. And in the bardo, you meet all of your demons, and you have to wrestle your dragons before you can transcend to the other side. Um, mm. I believe that some of us experience the bardo here. And so mm. really we're getting the dirty work done now so that when right. we do cross and go to the other side, it's just pretty, you know, pretty just like, oh, there I go. Um, mm. Every challenge that you face here, you're not going to have to go through that challenge again. You're really not. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. think that we are here because you have put together this wonderful podcast based on your experiences Right. That reach out and remind other people that they have that spirit within them. And yeah. so I would say that's the reason that we're here. I think that you've created a wonderful format um, and you do it so well. And I'm just honored to be included in that. Well, I am honored to have you here. So because, of course, oh, my goodness, I was so excited to talk to you. You are just so wise and thoughtful and inclusive. And I was just I can't, I don't want to get, I'm, first of all, I'm shocked that my grandmother isn't knocking your mental door down. <laughs> However, <laughs> like I have one of my dearest friends is a medium and she grew up here around us. And she yeah. will sometimes text me while she's heating her coffee up and be like, girl, your grandmother's your here. grandmother. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They anyway. definitely let us know that they're they around do. all the time. Yeah. I mean, I spend a lot of time giggling in my kitchen because I imagine what my grandmother would say if she were hearing me, you know, my children or my, you know, I, I, I laugh about that to myself quite a bit. Well, so. they are here hearing this stuff. They do watch over us. And they, one yeah. of the reasons that they don't have to grieve as much as we do is that they can still watch over us. We're the ones yeah. that have to 
you know, forsake their daily environmental, you know, contributions that they make into our daily life. And it's up to us to keep that conversation going with them. I always talk to my people um, just because somebody, I don't even say that people have died anymore. I say they've relocated, you know, they've just relocated to a different room. And I've, mm. I have to take it on faith and trust, you know, that yeah. can connect with them. And I yes. feel everybody should talk to their grandmother. Everybody should. Yeah. 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 No, I absolutely do. And I am absolutely laughing all the time, just imagining how much she would laugh at the things that I'm going through. I will sometimes just look at my ceiling to just be like, you know, I have a daughter that's just like me. I have a nine-year-old son that's just a little sassy as well. And I am laughing constantly because I'm like, oh, Nana would laugh if she yeah. saw this. Yeah. Like, oh, she saw me going through exactly what I deserve. She yes. would laugh. Yeah. 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 So, oh, I mean, I think that that's great. You're a wonderful mom. I think that your grandmother <laughs> really appreciates how you've incorporated a lot what she taught you into what you do in raising your own children. You know, Thank you, you. You honor her a lot in your life. And so I Thank think you. that's the best thing that we can do for them is live yeah. a life that would make them happy for us. Absolutely. And and I hope we all can. I think sometimes there are people who have passed on that uh, did not do what they were here to do. Can you, um, and I think that sometimes that, and I'm not saying me, my grandmother was great, but I do have people that have passed from my life that just weren't there for me, um, that I didn't maybe necessarily grieve. I wonder if in their afterlife, they are doing more work or having to come back again or oh, how, definitely. how is that? Oh, definitely. Is it's, that, yeah. Yeah. It's not as judgy as like um, karma would make it out. And, and like, the I, agree. Idea I think that's a very like, human, the way we think about that now is very human centric. I, I agree again, with you. Very yeah. judgy, you know, when, right. when yes. what, what I garnered from my near death, my experience that I had where I checked out for a little while was that there was only one question that I was asked, and that is if I was a giver or a taker. I wasn't <laughs> asked if I was a Muslim or a Christian or, or Jewish or, you know, Buddhist. Nobody yeah. asked me any of that stuff. It was just, Carrie, right. are you a giver or a taker? And I knew that the people that were givers get to go to one place and the people that were takers, and by takers, I mean people that intentionally hurt people. Um, right. People that are just not, uh, doing what they need to be here, which is to love each other. That's the only right. requirement, you know, make, yeah. make everybody feel good and be nice to each other. That's it. It's not that right. hard. And it's not so that hard. it really isn't. Yeah. But what I right. did feel when I answered the question and said that I was a giver is that I started crying for the takers because I felt that they were going to have a different experience than I was and that they had to get right with themselves. I don't think it was hell. I don't think there were demons like, you know, poking them with yeah. the forks or anything. I think they right. had to have a soul's timeout and that's what was going on. Right. With them. And so they had to sit with what they had done in this life and then have the opportunity to get right with that. And that may involve coming back here and doing some right. things to balance time. the scales a little bit, you know, but I think that everybody has the chance to transcend anything that they have going on in their life. They really do. And you can change, you know, if if you're somebody who has looked at the world as this is some place for me to just take as much as I possibly can from everybody right. and not care, you're thinking it wrong. Yeah. That is not what it's about. It, it really yeah. it's about giving of your heart making people feel good. That's it. That's all that, I mean, that was when I got to the other side, I was very clear about that was what the meaning of life was. Make the world a better place than it was when you found it. Easy. Wow. It is early in the morning for you to be dropping these truth bombs. Dang. Like I'm over here getting like, I'm, a, I'm emotional. Like I'm getting a little sweaty. I'm good. I'm just stunned. Okay. So what I want to talk to you about next is talk to me about your book. I would love to hear more about what it's about, who it's for, and, and sort of what messages you meant to convey 
in your writing. I wrote the book for women. Um, I've gotten some blowback on that, but there's a lot of men's only stuff. I wanted to write something that was maybe like all of human history yes. is sort of men's only stuff. Maybe maybe we could yeah. be okay. Having maybe we some could of okay stuff. to have a book for ourselves. And yeah, it isn't that I was excluding people. It was that I was focusing on what I know, and that's being a woman. And yes. I do personally believe that women's intuition is something that operates in a different way than men, what they call instinct, you know, um, because the emotions are engaged in it when, when it's female, when it's male, it's just rational thought, you know, mm -hmm. um, with mm -hmm. women, it, it's with us, it's, it's much more coming from that gut feeling. Um, and yeah. so I wrote it for women to get in touch with their own power. I wrote it for mm -hmm. women to give them permission to trust themselves. Um, I wrote Ooh, it. Sorry, we need to like we need to let that settle. Yeah, you were giving permission for women to trust themselves. Yes, love it. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, but because we do, we're taught to not trust ourselves, and so that's exactly right. Uh, it, it, we need voices out there saying it's okay, and and you've got the answers within. And mm -hmm. in what I do professionally is I read people and I give them the answers. But what I want them to walk away with is understanding that they can find the answers in themselves, too. You know, they yes. can be their own reader. Sometimes you have to go and seek another person because you don't have mm. the objectivity. But that's you have right. the answers, you know. Um, yeah. And so I put together a bunch of exercises um, and a bunch of just motivating words. Um, for women, it's it's not you know the the it's not war and peace. It's a nice, easy mm. summer read. But when you put that book down, you will feel more equipped to use that intuition for yes. yourself, That's for true. others. You know, however you may want to move forward with that. Mm. That is so huge. I love that for you. I love that for us. I love that for all of us, because honestly, I think that a lot of women, a lot of people just even within my own circle, won't give any credit to that instinct or, or follow it. Or maybe sometimes we wonder, oh, is that am I am I, you know, am I putting my thumb on the scale? Yeah. It is, is what I want the outcome to be the thing that's making me feel like this will happen? Or is it actually, or, or can I believe myself, you know? Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, my partner and I laugh all the time because I'll be like, ooh, don't take the highway. And he'll just be like, I trust you. You're absolutely right. I'm sure you're right. Like, yeah. I am sure that this will go exactly how you said. So I'm just going to believe you in the beginning. And of course, we've been married for like 10 years now. So oh, like, great, great. It, yeah, it, it, it takes you to that place where you're just like, no, nope, I know. You know what? You're exactly right. We're going to trust you on the traffic, too. Yay! Um, I right. So now, if we've got another 40, 50 years, we could really, we could really make some things happen. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Will. yeah, that's your person. I know that's my person. I know. Um, I was very lucky to find my person early enough that I could make changes into my life and feel more secure in, like, sort of my, you know, my 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 house, right? Yeah. And I felt safe, which allowed me to sort of unpack things in my life that I felt more skittish about. That's so I cool. think that that's, I mean, right, exactly. I, I give him tons of credit for just being the person that stabilized me enough to let me grow, right? Yeah. Because you can't grow when you're in that survival mode. When you're in that survival state, you're not growing, you're just surviving. Surviving, so, yeah. Right, exactly. So I was very lucky in that way. So you mentioned that you were developing classes. What what are those about? What are they for? Well, I'm I'm doing an online class version of the book um, so that people who want a little bit more in-depth experience, um, it's an eight-week course and it's about awakening your intuition. Um, again, with exercises and uh, a real formal training uh, format to it. Um, I've also uh, got a program called Speaking with Spirit, and that is um, one that is geared for people learning to connect with their ancestors, their guardian angels, their spirit guides. Um, and so that is a, a slightly different course because it's just a little different skill set. But it really both courses about learning to trust 
and mm -hmm. learning to experience that there is a world around us that is greater than what it is that we are in right now. You know, we have oh. we have help out there, whether that right. help is our own intuition, whether that help is a spirit guide, whether that help is a guardian angel or an ancestor. We are not in this alone. It's an illusion mm -hmm. that we are alone. Um, I yeah. hop into this body and I can pretend that I'm separate from the rest of the world when in fact mm -hmm. I'm not. We're all connected. You're connected. Those who yes. have passed, those, those who are here, we are all plugged in together. And so mm -hmm. I feel that um, what both of these courses do is let you know that and give you the skills and the tools so you can go out and use that in your day-to-day -day life to enrich it and give yourself more personal power in handling this whole crazy experience that we're in. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that completely connects the last thought to this thought. The more that you can trust, the less you are in survival mode, the more that you can grow, right? Yes. Because if we think about the world as we have experienced it, no matter who it is, we don't leave the world unscarred. So no. everybody experiences that trauma. Everybody experiences that fear. And so I really, I think you're exactly right. Learning to trust is going to be the thing that makes you feel like you can sort of take on the world that you can that you can grow that you can be free and i don't mean free in the sense that like we talk about free i mean like mentally free yes. i mean like emotionally free spiritually free i think that that's an incredible add to the world that's that is amazing i love that good oh, thank you thank good. you thank you <laughs> good thank we you. need it thank you um thank you. I want to talk to you since you're the expert here and, and when else do you get an expert? How do you perceive spirit? It's like an energy that you feel. And when you tap into that energy, you can get things about them. But when spirit crosses, we don't have a body anymore. We have an right. ethereal body, which is very different. Um, and mm. so uh, when I was really young, I used to feel the information coming in the back of my skull mm -hmm. and coming mm -hmm. up into my head like an idea mm -hmm. would form. Um, right. And that's how I would feel the thoughts coming into my mind about, you know, people that passed and what they were like and all of that. Um, I'm a combination. I've been doing this such a long time that... I've been clairaudient, I've been clairvoyant, I've been clairsentient. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. all of the Claires. I've I've dealt with all, right, of, all the, of the Claires. <laughs> yes. you know, the, the Claire family. And um, right. I think that we will all have different ways that we experience it. Just keep at it. Um, meditation is the push-ups of intuition. It really is. Meditation. <laughs> yes will open yes. the door to your intuition quicker than any other thing that you could do. And right. then acknowledging the information that you receive. Think of your intuition as being a friend. The same right. way that if you had a friend and you kept in ignoring that friend, the friend mm. wouldn't call you anymore. It's the same thing with That's your right. intuition. If you ignore it, your intuition is going to go, oh, this chick here, she just goes away. <laughs> send you yes. Down. Yes, you you've never call. <laughs> you've got to acknowledge it and say thank you to that part of yourself that is giving you that information, really. Yes, yes. For me, as an adhd -er, meditation can be really difficult. Um, one of the things that I had struggled with in the past was I will close my eyes, I will settle, and then the first thing that'll happen is like, whatever you're afraid of, right? Like image of a shark attacking sure. you, image of a, do you know what I mean? And it took me such a long time to realize, how about I just acknowledge that and ask it to sit in the corner? Like, yeah, right, how about, sit in the corner. oh, yeah. scary, scary demon face just to be scared, you know what I mean? Okay, yep, perfect. You go sit in the corner, have a crunchy snack. I'm gonna do this first. We'll cut back to that. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It, I mean, the lady, I was like, oh, is it gonna be forever that I can't do this one thing that is so basic to our humanness and realistically, it wasn't about pushing it away. It was about acknowledging it. And that yes. was, that's the things that people should tell all of us. Like, oh my gosh, the idea that some people can just sit and like their brain quiets down. That's not what happens to me. Yes. Yes. Um, so if you are ADHD and you are interested in learning how to meditate, 
nobody told me this, so I'm telling you this. The answer is to acknowledge the things that are popping into your mind and ask them to go sit. Absolutely. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. And also another thing is, is that you might do better with guided visualizations rather than stationary meditations. Um, yes. a guided meditation, somebody is telling you what to be thinking and you pay attention to the person's voice. And that that right. can be helpful. It's not as it's not exactly the same as just sitting and quiet and um, you right. know focusing on the thoughts, but um, it really is. It's a good way to find a bridge between ADHD and meditation. Is sometimes yes. guided meditations and visualizations. You are so right. So more and more, we are noticing that generations of people are being born that care more and more about humanness yes. and other human beings. Before we were millennials, we were Generation We. Yes. And then we have Generation Z today. Do yes. So we have the we have the millennials, the zennials, and Zoomers, and now we have Generation Alpha being born. So my children, and I've heard Generation Alpha be described as exhibiting feral empathy. I think about what that means for the world today, and I'm going to get to my my very dear friend, who's a friend, who's a fan of yours. His question: Do you feel that we are at sort of an ascension point? Do you feel that all of these children, all of these people, all of these sorts of spirits are being born onto this earth to create a change that we have not seen before? Yes, I absolutely do. We have to. It, it our our survival depends on it, and so. Okay. We are evolving. Um, it, it's a, it's adaptation, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. a big principle in biology and yes. um, in survival is adaptation. And so um, we find the things necessary to survive and we start developing those. That's, you know, ev evolution, right? And so yes, we need to have a we mentality in order to survive. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I'm a, a cusper boomer. I'm a um, mm -hmm. I'm technically a boomer, although they found a new generation. It's called Generation Jones that I fit in mm -hmm. um, from mm -hmm. 1956 to 1965. Um, yep, but we were right. we were considered the me generation. And how screwed mm -hmm. up is that? You know. And look mm -hmm. at how our world has devolved into a very very selfish yes. place. Um, yes. It all started with this idea of the me generation. There is mm -hmm. no me. It's all we. No. I mean, that's it. Right. And so these kids are popping out and they have these skills mm. and God bless yeah. them. We need them. So encourage yes. that in your children, identify it and, you know, allow them to teach us how yes. to be human. What do you think other. inspired that? What do you, I, I, I have to know now. I don't want to paint everybody with the same brush. But what do you think inspired sort of that boomer generation, that me mentality, that me first, I turned out fine, like all of that sort of mentality? What well, that you, happened, it was kind of in the 80s. It was like the greed is good mantra and rugged individualism. Um, I, I, there's a, there's a philosopher, Ayn Rand, who I will say yeah. probably is more responsible for that selfishness than any other person who wrote anything. It was right. the, her philosophy was the philosophy of individualism, right? Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, individualism as a society doesn't work. You could be an individual no. in your own house, but you go out into the world, you need to learn how to play well with others. And, That's exactly you know, bullies were getting um, rewarded in the 1980s, you know, um, right. reality shows uh, reward mm -hmm. some of the most reprehensible behavior that's out there. Yes. And it's made it yeah. normalized. And we that's can't right. survive like that. We just can't. No. You know, I mean, psychopaths end up blowing everything up, you know. That's they, exactly right. And so we can't survive that. So that's what. I mean, I think the angels up above were like, mm, we got to send some recruits down there to shift this or, <laughs> or it's just going to destroy itself. And so yeah. I think it's that yeah. important right now. I think it's that urgent right now. I think we are really on a precipice of, you know, the, the takers and the givers. And I hope the yeah. givers win because if the givers don't win, that we're not going to have any resources left. And so everybody that's will right. lose. So, yeah. Everybody loses. Yeah. That's right. Do you think we will? I do. Do you think we'll make it? Yes, I do. Good. I am ultimately an optimist. Uh, 
I don't too. care how many times I've been kicked down by life. I still believe it's a, it's a gift and I get back in the game as soon yeah. as I can, you know? So I'm happy to be here. I'm hopeful to be here. And my motto actually is the future is friendly. So that's, that's the way I look at it. The future is friendly. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest with you, Miss Carrie. I'm so excited that I got to chat with you today and lift my spirits because I have been Woo, we've been living in an existential crisis since the pandemic, and I've got kids in this ex yes. existential crisis. Yes. I'll be honest with you. This is the most pot committed I've ever been for anything. Oh, <laughs> so, well, yay. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. So I always say this, but like, I feel like this conversation could go on forever, but I got to get let you get back to your life. How do people follow you? How do people work with you? Um, how would you like them to reach out and how can they support you? Well, I am easy to find. I am neworleanspsychic.com. That's my email address. If you Google New Orleans Psychic, I'll come up. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. the easiest way to find me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be venturing into YouTube soon and doing all this Ooh. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> doing a, um, I have another thing that I'm working on, something called The Good Mojo Show. And it's just a show about um, positive things to kind of balance the the world of the negative. But um, the constantly negative, yes. I'm easy yes, to find yes, out there. there. I, I'm easy to find and I love connecting with people and they can either email us or call us or the best way would to start would be to look me up on the internet, just New Orleans Psychic, and you'll find me. Excellent. I'm so, so excited. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's been my joy. Okay. So, friends, thank you so much for being here with me today. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to subscribe to the Indomitable Podcast for more incredible stories of humaning. Remember, my new book, Indomitable, A Foster Care Story, is available wherever you get your books. And finally, as ever, I am so happy to have you here in community with me. And remember, together, we are truly indomitable. Have such a great week and take care, everybody.